very good evening everybody meeting again in the session of clothes philosophy the genius of homeopathy from stuart clothes and we have started discussing about the chapter the general pathology of homeopathy having a lot of meaning lot of concepts and all concepts which are in relation with the homeopathy modern concepts of pathology are related with the material pathology the concepts of homeopathy deals with the dynamic pathology a, pr a thing prior to the material pathology hidden in the dynamics at the level of miasms and that's what he has explained that the patho general pathology of homeopathy relates to the miasms the causes of chronic diseases and hanuman was the first one to classify the chronic diseases into four different parts <clears throat> the first variety occupational or drug diseases and thereafter all three true chronic diseases are divided into you know, basically two parts first part is venereal and another is non venereal venereal again they are divided into two parts the syphilitic and psychotic and when non venereal is story and thereafter <clears throat> clo started explaining about relation of bacteriology with the homeopathy see hanuman was way ahead <clears throat> in the concepts of bacteriology he he was the first one to explain the concept of bacteriology in the form of acute miasms while writing down the organ of medicine in the aphorism number 72 while explaining the causes behind the aphorism um, behind the <clears throat> epidemic and endemic diseases he explains that they are caused because of acute miasms and what hanuman expected that these are the creatures which are invisible to naked human eyes but which are present and which are responsible to produce such communicable diseases and ultimately though because of them there is a um, those diseases develop so he without having any microscope in his hand still he was first one to explain the causes of vibrio cholerae as certain creatures invisible to naked eye and which remains hidden in confined spaces of the ship board and responsible to produce a hazardous disease like cholera at that time and he was the first one to explain yes this is the this is we can prevent with the help of homeopathy and he has prevented it at the same time treated it with a mortality rate of just 0.5% and when modern medicine treated it with the mortality rate more than 30% so this was a big big achievement by hanuman at that time and these are things which he tried to explain over there and close explains he his concept of understanding this so he has given different different examples different peoples from the modern medicine who have already explained the facts uh, that vaccine therapy is also a failure then they have explained that whatever the medicines which are used in material form never cures the diseases and these are the collections which are collected from the american journal of um, american medical general journal or it is collected from the um, uh, from the persons who are uh, strict allopathic practitioner but who themselves explain these failures in their practice during that time and in a big journals and that's why he was explaining about dr mcconkey and understanding of the mcconkey and how he explains hanuman's theory was found to be a very perfect theory in in his <clears throat> editorial so this is what we have learned in last lecture we'll start with page number 94 the last paragraph the primary error consisted in regard in regarding sora merely as a dyscrasia or diathesis which is directly opposed to what hanuman's hanuman taught as we now understand it instead of regarding sora as a dyscrasia hanuman included several of dyscrasia among the morbid conditions and diseases caused by the sora so there was a wrong uh, concept or misconcept regarding the Uh, sora it was considered to be as a dyscrasia or disease sora is not a disease sora is such a miasm which is invisible 
which is no dynamic noxious agent inimical to the life and which which gets transmitted from generation together which is responsible to produce many varieties of diseases it is not a one disease it is a collection of many of the disorders out of which depending upon the individual it expresses so sora is a very big terminology it is not a disease it is not a dyscrasia but it is one specific entity which covers many things and during hanemonian time seven eighth cases of sori variety sora is a big entity when we consider sora it is so, so simple to understand where allopathic theory fails see they consider it hereditary disorder and if you go with the hereditary disorder many times in the past history, past history family history of the patient even up to the grandparents and grand grandparents you don't get that disorder in the past and still this fellow is having duchenn muscular dystrophy which i am treating since long time and working on it i have nearly about 120 cases of duchenn muscular dystrophy con considered to be x linked disorder and it is a hereditary disorder but nearly about 70 cases there is no history of duchenn muscular dystrophy in the family so where from where it has been born from where it has been grabbed then when you consider looking towards it then you consider this is not the this is as it is transmitted from past generation to the present generation but it is a mutation of many many disorders in from the family this has developed this fault is developed because because there was some other disorders con, co, came into the psychosyphilitic miasm or cancer miasm and alt responsible to produce the duchenn muscular dystrophy we can have an answer why this disorder has developed modern medicine doesn't have an answer because they consider it is x linked from the family history but there is no family history and there, there is no answer we have answer because we consider the miasm and miasm is a very big terminology which includes all those things and this is what i want to say i want to tell you so this this is what he is explaining the sora is a big terminology it is not a disease then he what say then he says such an error could only have arisen in the minds already prejudiced by current erroneous teaching of the day and not yet enlightened by knowledge which was soon to come as a result of original research in the field of bacteriology on this ground it is conceivable how the error arose and spread new truth quickly grasped by the few alert and open minds penetrates the average mind slowly <laughs> very very type typical criticism he has mentioned over there what he is saying over there why people started understanding sora as a disease because it was the it was an era when the every disease was named with certain names there was yellow fever there was jaundice there was sindenham chorea there was there are many more asiatic cholera and people consider sora is also one name of the disease but it was not the name of the disease it was a big entity few people understood it who have understood the concept of anemia and that's why he has criticized with one sentence new truth new truths quickly grasped by the few alert and open minds penetrates and penetrates the average mind slowly so those who are having average mind they cannot grasp but those who are alert they grasp this concept original investigators themselves absorbed in their own pursuit are often reluctant to consider their work in its relation to the work preceding investigators even if they are philosophically or philosophically competent to do so which as a rule they are not so many co practitioners allopathic practitioners during hanemonian time they were not getting uh, understanding the idea of anemia because they don't want to change that was the problem with them what hanemon was talking was the truth what the result of experimentation but they were not ready and they are reluctant to act, accept the ideas which are told by hanemon and that was the reason why they have not understood the concept of sora at that time so when hanemon reached to these causes if they would have understood this concept 
it would be, have been a very good thing for the suffering humanity. But the modern medicine never digested, accepted all those concepts. And that's why it was not get propagated. The exceptional work of an individual forerunner, therefore, may, be, may easily be overlooked for a time. But eventually, the truth discovered by him will be recognized as it has. It now has been a case of Hanuman. So whatever the hard work done by Hanuman was not recognized by the people. But ultimately, this was, this will come into the truth and this will, people will going to get about it. So this thing definitely people will understand. But it will take a long time, he is saying. The exception, the Hanuman was the first to pursue and teach the parasitical nature of the infectious or contagious diseases. What he is saying? Hanuman was the first to pursue and teach the parasitical nature of infectious and contagious diseases, including syphilis, the gonorrhea, the leprosy, the tuberculosis, the cholera, the typhus and typhoid fever, and the chronic diseases in general, other than occupational diseases and those produced by drugs and unhygienic living, the so-called drug diseases. So, he was the first one to explain all those causes. No one was ready to accept Hanuman's concept. Modern science has accepted this theory after 50 years, when Robert Koch first explained about the Vibrio cholerae as the cause of cholera. Hanuman was saying that since long time and he was explaining it is not only for the cholera, it is there with typhoid, it is there with typhus, it is there with the tuberculosis, it is there with the many parasitical diseases. And he was the one, one more who used to say many diseases are caused because of your administration of large doses of medicine. So these are the things which are happening and people were not accepting what Hanuman was telling. In fact, it was not easily acceptable for them. Hanuman held that all chronic diseases are derived from three primary infections, infectious parasitic sources. See, all three means Sora, Psychosis, Syphilis. Sora is related with the each. Each is caused because of Sarcoptis KB, a parasitic infection, mite. Psychosis is related with gonorrhea, caused because of miseria gonorrhea. Syphilis is caused because of Treponema pallidum, uh, again a bacteria. All three are the, the main diseases which are caused because of the this parasitic infectious form. All chronic diseases, he says, show such a constancy and perseverance. As soon as they have developed and have not been healed by the medical art, that they ever more increase with the years and during the whole of man's life, lifetime and they can be diminished by the strength resisting belonging to even to the most robust constitutions and what he is saying when this these disorders develops and not treated properly with the homeopathic means means they are treated with allopathic means palliated suppressed and then they remains long time ultimately ruining the health of the person and day by day destructing the human organism still less can they be overcome and extinguished? Thus, they never pass away by themselves, but increase and are aggravated even until death. So, they will not get tackled. They go on increasing, increasing, increasing until at a length the organism is destroyed. This is what the Hanuman have defined the chronic diseases. They must therefore have for their origin and foundation constant chronic miasms whereby their parasitical existence in the human organism is unable to continue, rise and grow. Only living beings grow. So, all three, the gonorrhea is caused because of Nizaria gonorrhea, the syphilis is caused by Treponia pallidum, and the Sora was caused by Sarcoptis KB. All three are infectious and all three are because of living creatures. When they produce primary symptoms, and if you don't treat them properly, they remain hidden over there. The disease goes hidden over there and ultimately reflects at the secondary level. And those disorders become chronic, unable to cure itself, unable to recover themselves. And then they require homeopathic aid. 
without homeopathic aid they will not going to get cured and if you don't cure them they ultimately goes on increasing affecting the more internal vital organs and ultimately ending with the death of the human being so these are the three chronic diseases ultimately are the causes are always hidden in the living creatures infecting organism a misunderstanding of the sense in which hanuman uses the word mayadam has deceived many it was the word loosely used in his time to express the morbific emanations emanations from putrescence putrescent organic matter animal or vegetable and sometimes the influa arising from the bodies of those affected by certain diseases some of which regarded were regarded as infectious others are not so there are many many misunderstanding regarding the concepts of mayadam in fact hanuman's concept was very clear but people have not accepted it hanuman was saying it these are the noxious agents and which are these are noxious agents dynamic noxious agents inimical to the life and which are transmitted from generations together this was hanuman explained but people considered it as a disease people considered it as a toxic agent visible material toxic agent in the form of effluvia in the form of putrescent matter and because of which their concept becomes wrong so what hanuman was saying was not easily accepted by the people and that's why they were not understanding what mayadam is there if you are able to understand the mayadam you can treat if you are not able to understand mayadam if you still look with the material aspect you can't cure and that's why it is very much necessary to understand the concepts of animal in relation to the mayadam and what its concept was clearly dynamic clearly a big entity which covers many of the disorders then the sang sir lecture madhe baad mein film karenge hindi bol what he further says a misleading distinction was also made between miasma and contagion and between contagion and infection there were different different misconceptions regarding those um, uh, words miasma contagion contagion infection these are the different terminologies and these were the different terminologies which used to produce a lot of lot, lot of confrontation in people's mind pars medical dictionary london 1819 now a very rare book but the highest authority at that time at that time article miasma says so in that specific um, book the terminology miasma how it has been explained in the more strict pathological investigation of modern authors they are distinguished from contagion which is confined to the influa effluvia from the human body effluvia means discharge or toxins or um, excretory matter effluvia from human body when subject to disease it the contagion when it does not proceed immediately from the body but it has been sometime confined in clothes in sometimes styled miasma another kind of miasma see contagion is putrid vegetable matter and indeed everything of this kind which appears in the form of air miasma then strictly speaking is an aerial fluid combined with atmospheric air and not dangerous unless the air is loaded with it see the concepts all the concepts were material they were considering something material effluvia is the miasma or air in the air the miasm remains or in the discharges the miasm remains in the vegetable matter the miasm remains that was a wrong concept it was not clear and that's why it was not understood by the people at that time each infectious disease has its own variety diffused around the person which is it has attached attack and liable to convey the disease at different distances according to the nature of the complaint or to predisposition of object exposed to it what he is saying each infectious disease has its own variety diffused around the person which it has attacked so every infectious disease produces its own way taking into Mm, are mm, uh, affecting that individual at all level and liable to convey the disease at different distances 
it used to produce the manifestation at different levels according to the nature of the complaint or to the predisposition of the object exposed to it. Under the contagion or infection, the same authority says, it has been lately attempted to distinguish these two words through, though not with happy discrimination. We should approach more nearly to a common language if we employed the adjective infectious to the diseases communicated by contact, for we infect a lancet and uh, we catch a fever by contagion. Contagion then exists in the atmosphere and we know distinctly, but one kind, vice versa, Mars miasmata, which prove consists of inflammable air. So there were a lot of confrontations, many, many, many confrontations regarding the words, what infectious means, what contagion means. And that, that because of that, Hahnemann's um, concept of miasm was getting mixed with them. They were considering miasm is one more thing which is like a contagion or like infectious disease is, is responsible to produce a disorder or which is a, itself a disorder. And all such mis, misunderstandings were there regarding all those words. Because of which there was a lot of jumbling regarding the understanding of miasm, miasmatic concept. So, Hahnemann wants to explain something more than that and people started understanding it in a different material form and that makes a chaos. It has made a chaos in the people's mind. Actually, Hahnemann wants to say it is something inimical, dynamic, noxious agent. Everywhere present in the human life or everywhere present is responsible to produce a disorder. So, this is what he is explaining over there. And these all confrontations he is trying to explain because he wants to make clear this is not miasm. Why he is explaining all those things? He wants to tell you this is not the miasm actually. The LFU, the, uh, at that time, there was a method nomenclating the diseases to give the names to the diseases. See, he has given the last number of least the LFU of America, epidemic Qatar, plague, dysentery, scarlatina, Egyptian ophthalmia, jail, hospital or other fevers, smallpox, measles, ulcerated throat, whooping cough, the each, the mineral disease, the yods. Yods means it is a chronic bacterial infection affect, affecting the bones, cartilages and skin. So it is a chronic bacterial infection affecting bones, cartilages and skin is yods are mentioned as an examples of miasmatic diseases, some of which are regarded as infectious and others are not. Other complaints supposed to be infectious are apparently so from that from their being the offspring of contagion, that is aerial fluids combined with atmospheric air only. So there was concept that this, these are the disorders caused because of such and such miasm, such and such things, such and such Mm, aerial fluid which contains that miasm and these were everyone was looking towards disorders with some cause in the material form enters in the body and then disease develops this was wrong it was wrong this is not animal in concept but it was interpreted in wrong manner and that's why they were considering everything in material form. Animal never wants to tell the material form. But it was not easily understood by the people. People are very, very variously susceptible to infection. The slightest breath will come sometimes induce the disease, while others will daily breathe the poisonous atmosphere without injury. So, if you consider the cause, infectious causes of the diseases or something enters in your body and disease, there are many people who doesn't get a disease and there are many people who used to get even slightest infection used to produce a disease. So, what is the, what is the, if, if your sentence is, uh, this infectious agent is responsible to, to produce the disease, it becomes a half-truth. Unless and until body accepts it, unless and until body is susceptible, they cannot get the disease. If the body is susceptible, then and then only they catch the disorder. So ultimately, it depends upon the individual and not upon the infection. 
ultimately it depends upon the bacteria uh, it depends upon the susceptibility of the human being to the bacteria or in a virus or parasite and then and then that that person gets affected so these are different different concepts one has to understand it clearly and concept of miasm one has to understand clearly and this is what he wants to explain over there that you should be very thorough regarding the concepts of those endless and until these concepts are clear it is not possible to understand exactly the miasm and he is explaining all those con confrontation simple thing is that miasm is a dynamic noxious agent transmits from generations together and it it includes many things it is a big entity one has to understand it is not something material it is immaterial i think we'll stop over here in the evening we'll continue with natremia most probably today we'll finish the natremia in evening lecture at 8 o'clock so that's all for today thank you being there and we'll meet tomorrow with the philosophy session this first part is little bit more theoretical and once we'll start with the doctrine of latency and all those things then you'll understand this chapter more clearly in stuart close so we'll stop over here and then we'll continue with this tomorrow thanks a lot for attending the session i know it is the more theoretical but this unless and until you understand what is wrong you cannot understand what is truth so we'll continue with the same tomorrow thank you